Tensions are growing between Beijing and Washington over the fate of TikTok in the U.S. China warning Thursday against U.S. efforts to ban the popular app or force parent company ByteDance to divest its U.S. operations. That came just before Shoji Chu, CEO of ByteDance, which is the company behind TikTok, testified to Congress that the app had no significant ties to Beijing. Calls for Washington to act on TikTok gathered steam after that testimony. The issue is the latest source of tension between China and the U.S. And Clifford Coonan, my colleague, joins me for more on that. Um, Clifford, let's start with this testimony. There was, this was highly anticipated. A lot of people uh, talking about how this would go. How did it go? Well, I think it's fair to say it didn't go well for, for um, uh, TikTok or its parent company, ByteDance. Um, it was basically they'd done a lot of preparation. They'd installed this CEO who, who looks in many ways like he's, he's um, like a, ch a chat GPT version of, of a CEO. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's, he's, um, he's Singaporean, so he's not mainland Chinese. He's Harvard, Goldman Sachs. You know, he's got these excellent credentials. Um, he's a great appointment. And they hope that by that, that they can basically uh, present a much more progressive and much less China, People's Republic of China aspect to the company. And instead, he faced this grilling. And um, I mean, tech CEOs never do well in these congressional hearings, I think it's probably sure. fair to say. But um, he still, he he evaded questions. He was, uh, he, he found it difficult to answer things. For example, he was asked about Xinjiang. Now, I know a lot of CEOs are being asked who have- This is the Western Chinese province, province where Muslim minorities are oppressed? Exactly, yeah. And he was asked about whether there was persecution of the Uyghur Muslims there. And um, he kind of dodged the issue and tried to focus on the content of uh, that, that's in, in, the, in the app. So other Western companies have done this. Volkswagen has done this um, in, in Germany. They've also said that there's no labor violations at their plants in, uh, in Xinjiang. But it's just one of those examples of things where he really, he really faced a grilling and, and didn't come up with the goods. You use the word installed as if he's not the real face of this company. Is there anything that Chu could have said to reassure Congress in this case? Well, I think there's been a lot of things. I mean, since the Trump, Donald Trump basically tried to put TikTok up for sale um, a few years ago, and then um, he changed his mind um, also because the Chinese stood up. And the Chinese government basically, they love the algorithm that runs TikTok um, and that, ru uh, that runs um, Douyin, which is the Chinese version of mm. TikTok, because TikTok is actually banned in China itself. Yeah. Um, and they, so it, rather than give up their crown jewel, which is the TikTok algorithm, um, they basically put on a list of banned export items, and uh, on which they, at which point TikTok said, we're, we're not going for sale. And then Trump moved on anyway. Now, the Biden administration has revived these, right. um, has revived these things about forcing TikTok to, to divest. So um, I think that basically against that kind of backdrop, we've also had various spying allegations against them that they've admitted that they, they use their software to, uh, they use TikTok software to, to follow some journalists from Buzz, BuzzFeed. And, Several employees of the company, we should say. Yeah. At least that's what, uh, yes, that's what yes. the company itself says. Yeah, yeah, uh, of, of BuzzFeed and Financial Times. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've since apologized and the employees have been fired. But it's got this, this air of espionage, suspicion, corporate, uh, corporate espionage. So very little it could say. Let's listen, in this case, to what China said following that testimony, if we could play that. The U.S. should respect the principles of the market economy and fair competition. It should stop unreasonably suppressing companies from other countries and provide an open, fair and non-discriminatory environment for investment and operation. All right, a spokeswoman for the Chinese foreign ministry there. When we set aside sort of the, the weirdness of the fact that they're talking about free market principles, the Communist Party there in China, where does TikTok fit overall in the general trade dispute picture between the U.S. and China that we've seen in recent years? Well, I think what we saw yesterday was kind of, and, and where TikTok is positioned, is at the center of what is increasingly a battleground uh, between the US and China. Um, we're seeing it now, we've seen it in geopolitical terms over issues like Taiwan, and, and, and now we're seeing it um, in the corporate world, it's really stepping up. It began with Huawei, um, the, the te telecoms gear provider Huawei, which is, has uh, strong links to the Chinese government, and that proved problematic around the world. Um, TikTok, in some ways, is a much more public version of this. It's the public face, a much more public face for this corporate competition that we're seeing now between the US uh, and China. And it's ideological competition. It's, it's uh, basically you're seeing two very, very different 
styles of corporate governance coming head to head. You know, critics have pointed out that Western tech firms also have issues with transparency when it comes to data security or their data policies to their algorithms, perhaps, perhaps, and that also there have been instances of Western tech employees using um, the algorithms to target reporters, for example, or other firms, I should say. Um, don't these people have a point that this is sort of strange that, that this Chinese company really comes in the spotlight when there are similar um, examples with Western tech firms? Well, I think, I think the big difference is, is transparency. Um, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg has been, he's been one of the tech CEOs who's performed poorly in front of a congressional committee before. Uh, when, you bring, when you bring people up, you know, you see um, before these, uh, you can see that they do indeed have a point, but um, at the same time, there's no transparency and there's, people are, are not sure whether the Chinese government can just reach in and take whatever information it wants. And I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. All right, Clifford Kuhn and DW Business, thank you very much.